All right, so I'm gonna show you start to finish how to pull a vacuum the correct way and one of the fastest way without removing the cores. Now, I don't have 410 core tools on me, so if you try to use R22 core tools on a 410, it will blow that core tool apart and blow the, all the charge out. Believe me, I've done it. Um, so they're down in the truck. I don't feel like going down. I'm four stories up. So, I don't have all the time in the world. So we're gonna go ahead and show you how to pull a vacuum the medium quick way. So we got, first of all, start with some fresh oil. Um, change out your oil every two or three systems. I know it kind of seems stupid, but a lot of people don't do it. 10, 15 systems and they wonder why their shit's not pulling the vacuum. Well, that's the reason why, um, one of them. So make sure your oil is nice and fresh. Make sure your oil level is good in your pump. I like to keep mine just a tad bit higher because um, when it starts running, you know, you just want some good viscosity in there to keep that pump running as cool as it can. Um, what I do on my pump also, I don't use the big fitting. I use the T, just a normal brass T. I do two refrigeration hoses, the shortest hoses I can. In all my hoses, I have the cores taken out, the depressors. So I just take a little... Uh, a little pair of needle nose and you just twist it out, pull it out. Um, they're not really screwed in there that tight. So there's no core here, no depressor here, no depressor there, no depressor there, no depressor in there. What I do is I like to do my micron gauge. That's my core tool, but it just acts as a T right now. We got a shut off there. We got my depressor in there because we got to hit that one. Sorry. This one does have a depressor. This one doesn't. So what we're going to do is, this is my next system to vacuum. We're going to get our shit hooked up. So we're just going to throw one on one. I like to read my micron gauge on my high side. Um, some people have a preference on it. I prefer the high side. I think it's a better reading. But the best way to do it is to connect to your core tool right to the system then this way you can shut it off and read the actual system vacuum so you know that you don't have any leaks in there but all these systems held pressure for i think it's two weeks now um this is commercial in denver so they want a pressure test done and they want it to hold for two or three days but we just didn't have time to come back over here we've been so slammed um so we're back over here now we got 10 systems to vacuum in charge it's a pretty nice day out overlooking the city you got the mountains in the back a little snow cap couple resiners that we threw in um but yeah i did all this piping looks pretty good we got a couple of vibration eliminators they say not to use those on the high side they wanted them here i don't know but i installed them so filter dryer and that goes down four stories into uh a giant freaking space where there's offices and whatnot so let's connect our shit like i said put this one to your high side Just make sure that they're real tight. What I like to do is even though it kind of fucks up your your gaskets a little bit, just kind of, I like to give them just a little crank with the wrench. Just a little crank. And that's it. So I'll open my valve. I'll open my valve. Micron gauge. We'll set that on. I'll set my alarm for high, which I set that for 9,000. My low set for 500, so that's why if I walk away. Um, this is a really nice micron gauge, actually. This is the feel piece. And you can set your alarms on it. It's pretty loud, too. I've had it for a while. You just clean it with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, and you're good to go. So, all right, now you're ready to vacuum. Go to your pump. Turn that bad boy on. You make sure you feel a lot of air coming out of here. Because all this pump does is it removes the air from these pipes. So you're just pulling all the air out. <sighs> kind of like if you were to take a straw in your mouth and put your finger on the end and suck it down. That's all you're doing to these pipes, except these pipes don't collapse like a straw would. So you're just pulling all that air out. So you want to make sure that you're always feeling air coming out of here. And you're just going to sit and you're going to watch your micron gauge. Uh, once your micron gauge gets down to 500 microns, you can technically shut the system off. Um, I like to pull a little bit deeper vacuum. I like to go down to about 350 just to make sure that you're adequate. I'll shut my shut my valve right here because if you shut this one, you're not reading. 
so I'll shut valve here so I'm reading system I'll shut this valve here so I'm reading system I know that these are good because I have brand new freaking gaskets in there I always vacuum with brand new gaskets um, that's another big thing brand new gaskets so that's pretty much it pull it down to 500 and when you're done all you're gonna do you're gonna take your service wrench there's a couple different uh, sizes for these wrenches right here this is just the standard one they have a couple different but a normal freaking Allen key will work, but this is just a lot quicker. So after you're, after you're done pulling your vacuum and it's held for a couple minutes, you're going to release your high side first so that it goes through your dryer. Anything that's in there, any little shavings or anything are going to get caught in your dryer first. Um, normally you want your dryer by the evaporator. On this particular job, they wanted them here. Um, there's my first alarm. So we're already pulled down. So now we're going to set my low alarm. Okay, but yeah, normally you want these by the evaporator. The reason why is because the high side, you have the hot hot liquid coming through, right? So this starts to break down. The disconcessant inside starts to break down. Um, so you want to get that little bit of temperature swing, 10, 15 degree difference from here to the evaporator. So but like I said, they wanted them here on this job. So always make sure that your flow is going towards the evaporator. So we're going to sit here, we're going to wait, we're going to pull, like I said, release this side first. It may be kind of hard to open. Always make sure that you put the cold rags around this when you're brazing it. Um, we got some nice welds here for sure. So I'm, I'm a pretty good welder. They wanted these freaking stupid refrigeration uh, dryers on here. No reason why, but like I said, I, I'm just freaking putting it in. So. And then you're going to release your low side, and then you're good to go. Put your gauges on after that. Fucking see if you need to add or remove charge. Check your superheat, check your subcooling, depending upon if you have a fix or a TXV. TXV, you'll check your subcooling because that will maintain your superheat. So you do not need to check your superheat on a subcooled system necessarily. Now, for diagnosing purposes, fine, sure, but on a brand new system, not necessary these are particular these are 410a they are fixed orifices um so we'll be charging by super heat on this particular on these 10 units um we got some over there some here <coughs> take you for a walk show you where these bad boys are i'll show you this nice piping that we did over here now i'm the only tech at the company right now so this is this is all my work, so critique it if you want. But the shadows are kind of fucking me. But you can see everything's nice and tight. Nice and in line. We had to work in a pretty tight space right here, so. But everything's good. I think we're holding pressure. So that's, that's the way you do that. Alright, well, that's the way you pull a vacuum. If there's any questions feel free to leave a comment if you have a better way to do it by all means i'm always open to suggestions but like i said i didn't have my core tools on me so we're just gonna pull it like that with the core tools out i mean if you're doing a residential call and you need to get out of there quick then yeah you throw those core tools on there and you get that fucking vacuum on there real quick but like i said i'm getting paid hourly right now so we're gonna do it as quick as we can um but yet still kind of chill with it so i'm already down to 1180 microns we're gonna keep going down to about 350 i'm gonna hold it and then we'll do that little process release charge on the high side release charge on the low side and we'll check pressure so we got a nice day out here in denver should be able to check some air conditioners today it's about 70 75 but you guys have a great day take it easy rock on